today we're gonna build a machine in Krieger Raccoon and um Man, this thing is really cool. It was a gift. And so thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, I, I just love this model and I've built it by now, of course, but I'm going to show you how I did it and maybe some of the things that I did to it. Now, one of the things that I noticed right off was the fact that the plastic is very dense. It's, it's pretty thick. It's molded very well. There's not a heck of a lot of like flashing and stuff that I had to get off of there. Um, I think the mounting points are the, I'm not exactly sure the technical term, but the points where you're separating it from the sprue. Those in a few cases were so prominent. I thought they were details, um, but I mean, that's happened to me before and it's my first machine in Krieger. So um, it wasn't really a big deal. I really enjoyed building it. Um, that toughness that I said, you know, the density of that plastic helped out a lot because as I'm building this thing, I'm, I'm dropping it and, you know, over here, it's like it gets knocked over. It's not had a problem at all. So I, I put it together. I didn't do a lot of gluing. Here you see I'm doing like the back piece uh, because that's two separate pieces that come together. And then as it joins to this, this hip piece that I'm holding in my fingers there and Oscar decides to help with, of course, um, that kind of holds the whole assembly together because the, the front can come off the sides. That's what's folded down that you see there, kind of the wings that are coming out. That's where the arms mount. The bottom of that upper torso piece, uh, that's where the legs uh, kind of go into the hips. And so once you glue that up, it, it's really kind of gluing the arm pieces together and the leg pieces together and the feet pieces together. And then everything else slips together with like the poly, the little plastic connectors. Um, makes it articulated. Uh, it's pretty cool. I, I, I mean, I liked working with it. You can pose it. It's not a technical build, so I don't think there's anything to really look out for. I'm going to start showing you some of the detailing and some of the additions I did to it to kind of, you know, make it fit the scene that I want to put it in. Prior to painting, I thought I wanted to get a little texture on this surface. It's not got bad texture, it just doesn't have a lot. Now there's some detail in there, so I thought I would try Mr. Surfacer 1200 at first so I don't lose that detail, but I quickly came to find that no, it's it's totally fine. There's a there's a way to ensure you don't lose your detail uh, and, and using Mr. Surfacer 500 is what I ended up doing. I went over the entire model and I selectively left some things out that I didn't necessarily want just to have some contrast and texture. Once it was dry, I wanted to try to show where maybe the cast iron had been interacting with other pieces of metal, you know, on the suit or, or wherever it's at, where it's rubbing some of that cast iron smooth, because that happens with cast iron um, or, or just cast materials. So that's what this is, trying to remove some of that Mr. Surfacer to show wear points where it's smoothed out the, the metal surface. The first real kind of add-on that I thought about was something that was maybe forged in the field, like by a blacksmith or a farmer in this future dystopian, you know, world that, uh, that the mech are in. And so if you get damaged, if you need repair, well, you don't really have a, a shop to go back to. You have to find what's available and maybe you find a farmer or maybe you find a blacksmith that can repair the suit for you. So that's what these metallic little patches are supposed to be. Well, the number one reason I use lead wire is it is flexible and it's so soft that it doesn't spring back. In the past, when I've used wire, I get like a spring back. You know, you'll, you'll bend it and it'll take the shape that you bend it in, but it'll also spring back a little bit. And that can be frustrating, especially when you're working on a very small model. You're trying to maybe fish what's supposed to be a hose or a line or electrical conduit, whatever, into a specific position. And, um, you know, you're fighting the wire and the place you're trying to put it in. So once everything is, is really in its position and, and where I want, I want to secure them down with these little tie downs. And I use, you know, like seat belts or I think it's the thick foil that you get on a wine bottle over the cork. You pull that off, flatten it out, cut these out of uh, that material. And it just works great for these little tie downs. 
Now, in addition to the tie downs, I also, once everything was nice and flat against the model, I did put glue um, under the wires themselves. And I did that all over and yeah, I think it looks really fun. Once I had built it, I saw an opportunity back here to put a little extra detail. And I mean, it, honestly, it looks like it was made for it because that little, I don't know, blister that comes off of the, uh, the back of the thigh just looks like it could contain hydraulics. And then there's a flat plate at the top of the back, kind of like the calf of the leg there. And that was just like a perfect place to have an anchor point. So to me, it, it looked like a natural thing to add like little shocks or little hydraulics to the backs of each of the legs. For the shocks themselves, I, I actually didn't get a great picture of me making them, but it's just those little two brass pieces there. And it's a little bit of brass tubing and some very small brass wire stock. And um, by the time I got, you know, the little fixed mount here that I'm putting together done, um, the other one, I did it, then it all dried, and then I basically just clipped those, glued them in place, just like you see them here, and uh, I think they look great. So working on the left arm, I'm going to add some braided wire shielding, but to help it go on here, uh, because the ends fray, I'm putting a little piece of lead wire in there first, and that'll help support it while I, I try to fix it on with this little aluminum loop in the end of those tweezers. So I, I slide it on here, and um, uh, if you'll notice, I've got a magnet on the um, tweezers in my opposite hand, and those are gonna hold that while I take another set of tweezers and cinch it down around that connection. There's already a little bit of super glue on there, and then by taking these other tweezers and cinching it down around that, it it kind of gathers it all together. It gives it a really clean bond and lets the super glue set um, real quickly at that point. So the aluminum is, is really cinched down around there now, but to really tighten it, um, I take another pair of tweezers that are a little bit wider and I grip it right at the base. And as I twist it here, that really cinches it. Um, and at this point, it kind of locks up on me uh, because the, the super glue kind of takes effect. So uh, it was great. Um, I've toyed with this thing for a long time to try to figure this out and how to do it. And uh, if you're interested in using this, I hope it helps. Now, the other end of that, I'm going to use the other way that I found that was pretty easy to terminate it, which was, you know, just sticking it into something. So I've got a little standoff, little, um, like drilled out piece that is on the back of the upper arm and it just went, you know, straight in there. So that was a nice little detail. It's nice and fixed. It still allows the arm to bend, but, um, looks maybe a little bit better than the, like the poly stuff that they came with. Well, I'm not quite done with mods on my raccoon. I want to put an LED in here. And so that's what I, I mean, I did this before I did any of these other things, but I took a razor saw and cut that off. There's the piece. And I just kind of cut that off, hit it, cut a little angle there. Um, and because I want to keep all the wiring to go in the housing itself, I like that little gap in between the camera and the main part of the front. So I didn't want to interrupt that with wires going through. It'd be easier to do it. And certainly you can do it. Nobody will see it. But I just thought it would be cool to do it through there. Um, so I've got that done. And next, I'm going to wire this thing up. Uh, I've got a little test one over here. So it's not going to be too bright, but it'll give me a nice green glow. And so we'll get that inside the front, uh, front camera. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, let's see. Well, there it is. It, uh, I mean, you know not a huge climax or anything, but yeah, it's got a green light and it fit in there real nice. Uh, it's tight. So now I got to figure out where I'm going to have my resistor because I've got a, a resistor that needs to be in the way. Um, and so I've got to do all that, but yeah, I'm real happy with that. 
I am going to put a light behind this so just lights coming down out out down below uh, not through it of course so I'm taking out some material there and I'll take a different light like one of these different lights and put in there and I did a little test it was like kind of shining through the plastic so I'm gonna try this uh, tire glue give me a, a solid black barrier that'll help the light not shine right through it I think he needs to have a flashlight and this is from a previous thing I had worked on so I've got this little lens it's a little plastic lens and it fits that and then this is his arm and I can I can build a little you know way to, to mount that to the arm or maybe have it like this maybe I think it would look cooler if there was kind of like some a gap and some space there Before I put it all together, I wanted to kind of figure out the wiring. So after I drilled all that other stuff, I also found on the back side of the forearm, there's this little port or, or molding, whatever. Looks like it was designed for exactly what I needed. So I drilled that through and then cleaned it up real good so it's not going to uh, bind or anything like that. Because what I'll do is I'll put another one of those mesh wire protective sleeve deals in here. And then I went directly from that into the side of the suit. And so that's what you're seeing here. I wanted to get something to kind of dress the hole up so it wasn't... What, what is it, Oscar? Hey, buddy, I'm trying to record. Well, Oscar's just fine. He just needed some attention. So we went for a little walk. And then after I got this little port, it just makes it look a little nicer, glued onto the side, I went into the electrical. For the last light here, I'm using more of a yellowish tone. I thought it would be kind of a nice contrast from the green and the blue that I've already used. Um, I put this in here. This is the backer or the base that's going to go inside the brass tube to hold the light on the end of the arm. Uh, I glued that in place. Uh, and then I had to do a little bit of soldering so I don't have the final of putting that together. But what this is, is this is the bottom of the torso after the arm has been mounted. And this is where I'm going to fit the uh, wires out of the torso. So here's everything all wired up. Everything is, um, you know, I've tested it. Everything works real nice. And then I speeded this up because I took my time. I didn't want to pinch any wires. I didn't want to stress anything. And so it took me a little bit, but I got this all in there. It closes up really nicely. It's not, you know, pinching or impinging on any of the wires. And then I ran them out those two holes in the bottom. And then, um, yeah it's ready to kind of put all together and, and do some paint. Well, I got my lights in and I think they look, they came out really good. I'm, I'm really happy with it. So I got three lights. I got that guy there and that needs to be diffused. So it's going to look like a panel, you know, cause it's like a, supposed to be some night light or something. Uh, and then that, that kind of casts like a downward blue light. I'm really happy with that. And then this one, this is great. So I didn't expect this. So this is a spotlight and I have a lens to put in there. And so I have to mount that still. I got to do some work on the outside, but I didn't expect this. There's like this glow coming from the back side of it, which is just totally, I didn't expect. So I really, really dig it. I think the lighting looks great. I got a lot of painting to do, but uh, I need to get that done first. So yeehaw, I'm loving the old Machine and Krieger raccoon. As you may have guessed, if you've ever watched one of my other videos, now it's time to start a diorama. And so that's what I did. I, I stop when it's in the primer stage and then I build the diorama and that helps me because then I create an environment for it to be in and that helps me paint it. So the environment I chose is an alien planet and there's a greenhouse inside of a uh, like a geodesic dome. Um, now it's all 
it's all rusted out and um, like corroded and stuff because the dome has been breached. But there's a cryogenic chamber for a person to be in. Uh, this is like a little map of the facility I did. But the rest of it is all like corroded, but they're safe inside this little room. So that's kind of the, the um, gist of the diorama. So I'm going to show you how I do all that kind of stuff next video. And, you know, I really hope you're enjoying this. I certainly am. And if you are, you know, give me a like and a thumbs up and all that kind of good stuff. And we'll see you next time.